What's going on everybody? West Hobbies RC. So today we are back with the Nimbus 550 build series. So we already went ahead and got a lot done in part one and two. So part three, we are going to finish up, get the tail push rod done, tail guide, get started on the motor, ESC mounting and all that good stuff. So if you guys haven't already, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. Remember, Patreon, PayPal linked in every video description if you would like to help me out. Let's get started. Now we're going to go ahead and start with the tail push rod, and we are going to glue these little metal rods, which your ball links will screw on to. So we have our ball link here, we have our metal rods. Now in the manual, they're going to tell you that you want 8.7 millimeters from the end of this carbon rod to your actual ball screwed on so i did a test and measured it it's about exactly halfway in between this rod is what we want to mark and we're going to mix up some 30 minute epoxy jb weld anything like that we are going to push this rod into place so what we're going to do is i already mixed up the epoxy so we're going to grab our epoxy i'm just using regular 30 minute bob smith epoxy on a popsicle stick and i'm going to slather this up now i don't recommend using ca I recommend either using JB Weld or a good 30 minute epoxy. You want to get this covered in epoxy. And then we are going to take this, insert it into our carbon rod here. Now I like to kind of push in and pull out, try to get that epoxy down inside of this carbon tube. Try to get as much epoxy down in there as possible. And then I like to take my popsicle stick that we just mixed the epoxy with and try to wipe off any excess now that we got our excess wiped off we're going to come back with a paper towel and we're just going to clean it as best as we can get all that excess off all that excess epoxy and then you can come back with a second paper towel alcohol and alcohol will cut and clean the epoxy so this way we get a nice clean joint but also remember the alcohol is going to take our mark off. So now this side is done and we can flip the push rod over and we're going to do the exact same thing. So we're going to take our epoxy here, take a little bit on our popsicle stick. We're going to take our metal push rod here and we are going to get this push rod covered in epoxy. Now I personally would rather see and like to see a, some kind of metal sleeve to go over this, some kind of retaining clip but they does not have it on this helicopter. We're gonna do the same thing. We have our push rod marked. We're gonna kind of work that epoxy down into this carbon tube here. Try to get it down in there nice and coated. Then we're gonna come back with our paper towel. We're gonna to wipe off all that excess epoxy. Get as much of that excess off as we can. Clean it up. And then we're gonna come back with our rubbing alcohol on a paper towel push our mark back into there and then we are going to finish cleaning all that epoxy off move your paper towel and that will give you a clean and perfect glue joint and then just double check the other side and you can see it moved a little bit and then go back and forth and make sure that your joint is where you wanted it so now we're going to let this sit for a full 24 hours so do not rush this part so now we're going to go ahead and move on to mounting our motor while we wait for our tail push rod to dry so we are running an ego drift motor and we have our motor mount here now there is a problem with this motor and i'm going to show you now we have a really long shaft now it's not a big deal there's two things you can do you can either buy a shorter shaft i believe or cut it down which is what i'm going to do the other problem that we have with this motor is that we can only use two of the four bolt holes because the inside holes it is not equal all the way around but that'll be okay so we'll have two screws on each side so you're going to go ahead screw your motor down now the important step here is that you want 17 millimeters from the bottom base of your motor here to the bottom of your or top of your pinion here. So on this particular motor, that's the pinion pushed all the way down is 17 millimeters. So I'm gonna go ahead, mark this, cut the shaft off right here at 17 millimeters so that way it doesn't interfere with the frame. And then we will get our motor mount screwed onto our motor. A little tip, if you guys ever have to cut your motor shafts down, shorten them or whatever you have to do, don't ever just cut them down with your motor open like this. Get yourself a plastic bag, 
go ahead and insert this motor into the plastic bag, little Ziploc baggie, and then just poke a hole for the shaft of the motor to stick out through, just like this. Then you would go ahead and close this plastic bag. And I like to come back with a little bit of painter's tape now that our motor is closed in the bag and sealed off. And then I am going to just tape around the shaft where it went through the bag here. And that is just to ensure that it is sealed up and good to go. Press that down. Now our shaft is ready to be cut off. No metal shavings can get in our brand new motor and we will be back. So our shaft is cut down now, cleaned up, and we are ready to put our pinion on. So we're gonna go ahead and slide our pinion on the shaft here, just like this. One and a half millimeter driver. We want to line our set screw hole up here with the flat spot on the shaft. So Loctite already applied to my screw. I set screw now we're going to run it down now we know all the we want to push this pinion all the way down and we're going to want to make sure that this is nice and tight so now our pinion is officially on the motor now you could put your motor mount on first and then your pinion but your motor mount will fit over your pinion gear so now we're going to come back and again we can only unfortunately we can only use two of the holes so now this is the back of the motor mount it's going to go towards the back of the helicopter where your two screws come in this is the front of the helicopter. So we're gonna come in, two and a half millimeter driver, Loctite applied, and we are going to snug that one up. We are gonna come back, we are going to align our motor mount, two and a half millimeter driver, and snug this one up. So now I'm gonna come back and use my MIP just for tightening. So we're gonna to torque this motor mount screw down and torque this motor screw down. Now our motor is officially on its mount and now we are ready to put the motor in the helicopter. Make sure that the pinion set screw is towards the bottom of the motor, not towards the end of the shaft. Now we have our motor ready to go in the helicopter. Already soldered up our bullet connectors. So now we're just gonna go ahead and slide your motor into place. Just get those wires to go forward and the motor will drop down. Now remember you have this little tab here and that little tab will be useful in a second. So we're gonna go ahead, get our motor to drop down into the frame. It could be a little tight and motor wires. There we go. So now those little motor wires up here will bend into place and we want to slide this motor back and get our screws started. So two and a half millimeter driver, screw with a washer, Loctite. Go ahead, get the screw started all the way around. So now we got our last screw in the back. So there's two here, two here. So now on the top, there's going to be two screws, two and a half millimeter driver. They're gonna go here and this exact same on the other side. So it's gonna slide into here, get that screw started, do the exact same on your other screw, get it started. So now we have all of our screws started and we are ready to set our gear mesh. Now remember for the gear mesh, we're gonna use a little piece of A4 printer paper. I just cut me a little strip. Now our motor is loose and it can slide forward and backwards. So what we wanna do is we wanna slide it in to where our mesh is there. And then we are going to take our piece of printer paper and we're gonna see which way the motor is rotating. So we're just going to insert this printer paper into the gear mesh just like this. And we are going to rotate the motor till it grabs the paper and pull it back out. So now we're gonna look at our mesh and it's not tight enough. So we need to push it together a little bit more. And then we're just going to snug up two screws about right here. So let's just snug them up real quick. Now let's try again, another piece of paper. We're going to insert and rotate. Back it back out. See the tearing, it's a little too tight. Loosen these two screws back up. And we wanna slide it out ever so slightly. Now torque those two screws back down to lock the motor in place. Fresh piece of paper, same thing. Insert that paper in. And look at it, that right there is a 
perfect gear mesh, no tearing. So now we're happy with our gear mesh. Go ahead and tighten all your screws up, your two on each side and two on the top. So now our gear mesh is set. We have proper gear mesh, everything is good and working together perfectly. Our pinion is riding right at the bottom of our main gear. So now we can move on to mounting the ESC. I went ahead and pulled the ESC tray back off. Now you can mount your ESC a bunch of different ways, double-sided tape, zip tie. I personally don't like to double-sided tape and zip tie, plus you don't have a lot of area here for that. So the bottom of the Hobby Wing 150 has four mounting holes that are threaded. They do give you four holes in this carbon fiber tray. So what I did was just countersunk the other side. And now we're gonna take our ESC here. We're gonna lay it on this tray and those holes line up. So I countersunk them. I got really small countersunk screws, a little bit of Loctite, and I'm going to tighten all four of these screws in. So there'll be two there and two there. Now remember the tab with the longer end goes forward. This is back, so we're gonna want our ESC motor wires to wrap up and around and our battery wires to come back out towards the motor. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the other three now, in. Our ESC is mounted. So now we're gonna go ahead and get it put back in the ESC helicopter. ESC is mounted. We got our wires ran to the motor. We ended up shortening the ESC line, so that is done. Went ahead and got the RC Pro S7 connector soldered up. So the battery leads will go like this, go forward. I'll make some little holder here. So that way the leads are held nicely. So now it is time to mount the icon. So the icon is going to go right here on this little tray and it'll go wires back just like that. So I'm gonna go ahead, get that surface cleaned off, rubbing alcohol, double-sided tape, and then we're gonna start running our wires and figuring out how we're gonna go that way. Icon is mounted. So now we are gonna start figuring out how to run the wires. So we are running the wires, we're getting everything covered in heat shrink, and this is what I think I have figured out to make the cleanest wiring. So the rudder is gonna be very simple. It's gonna go right to servo four, very nice and clean, cut it, shorten it, very simple. Now, our servos are going to run through this little junction piece. This is going to bend and all of our wires are gonna meet under here, including our ESC and telemetry wire. Now, on your servos, if you're running an icon, your servo one is this front right servo. So we're looking at it top down. One, two, three. So this servo here is one. Back servo is two. Front left servo is three. So I'm going to go ahead, get all this stuff covered in heat shrink. ESC wires are going to run along the frame. These are going to go down. We're going to make another junction piece of heat shrink that's going to meet these two sets together. And then they will run up real nice and neat right into the icon. Went ahead and I 3D printed some little clips here that went under this screw, got a longer screw. And that holds our power wires. And I did that on both sides. So nice and neat. Got our wires heat shrunk down, ran along the frame here, up into here. Our servo wires are going to go the same way. Now we'll put a junction piece here to kind of tie all these in. And then we'll cut our servo leads to the proper length. Now we need to find out where we're gonna put the SRXL2. Once we figure that out, we can finish our servo wiring and figure out how we wanna route our pusher. We got our junction piece of heat shrink in here. We haven't shrunk it down yet. We just started getting all of our wires cut, shortened right into the icon. So now the only wire left is the tail servo and it is going to be very simple. It's just gonna come up and around just like that. I might use some little edge protection here so it can't rub the wires, but I think it'll be okay. And then we're gonna run our SRXL2 wires out these two holes in the frame. There's one on each side. So I'm gonna drill these out, put a little piece of tubing in here so the antenna can't shave. And then each antenna will come out just like this. And then our wiring will be completed. Finished up all the wiring, went ahead and got our tubes in the frame on each side there. Got some heat shrink. So now our antennas go out. Our SRXL2 is mounted under this plate. Got our fabric paint on there, so it is all looking good. So now it is time to set up the icon and do the tail push rod. Now that our tail push rod has had a full 28, it's actually been 48 hours since we epoxied it, it is ready to install our push rod ends. So we're just going to simply get it started and you are going to screw these all the way down until about the bottom out about where the threads are because that's where we measured and you're going to do the exact same on the other side here so go ahead get that guy started 
and screw them both down. And then also we have a Sharpie mark right there. It's very hard to see, but there is a Sharpie mark there. Now, the reason I left that Sharpie mark I did on both ends is so that when I am tightening this down, I can check and make sure that this hasn't moved. And if you really want to, you could put a line here to here, wipe it off later. But that way you can tell, because if you have a bad glue joint or your epoxy breaks loose, it will start spinning inside and that can create a lot of so issues. Before we put our push rod on, let's go ahead and install our tail blade. So that is what I am doing here. And something I just wanted to touch on was that our tail bolts are going through lock nuts. So you do not use any Loctite while you are installing these because you don't want to interfere with the locking nuts. They have little nylon in them and you can Loctite can eat the nylon. So now our tail blades are on. So now we are ready to install the push rod. So now installing the push rod, remember there is a number on each one of these. So you want the number to be facing out. So this one has a one on it and this one has a three. Yours might be different, but we want on the push rod end here on the tail, we want three facing out and at the servo, it's going to be turned to 90 degrees and we want one facing out. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead, check our tail, make sure our tail servo is 90 degrees. We can tell right here that our tail servo is 90 degrees and I did set it with a T-box. So now we are going to pop our link on at the servo here and then we're gonna work our way back to the boom and we're gonna wanna make sure that with our servo at 90 that we have about two to four degrees of right rudder input. So if you're looking at it from the top, fold it down, you want the top blade to be facing to, towards yourself, the tail, you want right rudder about two to four degrees. So let's go ahead and get the push rod on. So now I just screwed out my links and I positioned my tail blade about where I want it and go ahead and pop my link on and that is about two degrees so now I'm happy with that. So we have some right rudder input. We know that our tail servo is 90 degrees. So now we're gonna reach right into here and we are going to pop our link into place. So now our tail push rod is done. So I'm happy with that. Now we can move on to putting the anti-rotation or guide, whatever you wanna call this, onto the boom. So now we have our push rod guide here. And if you look at the guide, you will notice there's a little hex here for your nut and then a little circle there for your bolt. So we have our one and a half millimeter driver ready with our screw on it. And we have a little pair of needle nose there to, with our nut. So this is going to wrap around here. We're gonna go about halfway in between the boom. And there's a little notch right here and right here for your push rod to sit in. So we know that this side is where our nut is. This side is where our nut is. So we know that we want our screw to go in from the side that we're looking at. And we're gonna go ahead and kind of just hold this into position. It wraps around the boom. And then you have to squeeze all of this together while you get your nut on there. So it can be a little bit tricky. Go ahead, try to get that screw through and feed that nut on at the same time. We got our screw started. We are going to position our push rod guide about where we want it, which is about right here. And now we're going to look down the push rod and we're gonna make sure that it is straight. So you will adjust this guide so that your push rod is nice and straight down the boom. So we need to go a little bit more. And now our push rod is perfectly lined up from the tail to the servo. Now take your one and a half millimeter driver and go ahead and finish tightening that screw all the way down till this closes up. And we still have a little bit of play in here. It's not tight. So now our push rod guide is on. Our complete tail is done. Now we can move on to putting the pull tab on the battery tray. Now on the battery tray, of course, you have countersunk and not. So we want to put our screws through the countersunk side. Pay attention. This is the front of the tray. And this is the back of the tray. So this area here in the front is if you're gonna use their connector. So when you slide the tray in, it powers up, we are not. So we're gonna take our tab and we are going to hold it into position just like this. We are going to line up our hole, take our one and a half millimeter driver, Loctite on the screw, they've been cleaned. 
go ahead and run both of these screws down. One there, one Done. there. It should look like this. You're take your battery, you're gonna take your Velcro, your straps, and you are going to mount your battery. And you would position your battery wherever your helicopter CG's at. Every helicopter is gonna be different depending on we're running the Thunder Power Rampage ADC packs. If you're running a lighter pack, you might have to move it forward, you might have to move it back. So go ahead, get your battery mounted to your battery tray. So now we just got the icon set up. Blades are on it now. We decided to go with the Rototech 560s and 96 millimeter tail blades. So the helicopter is fully set up and ready to fly. I think it came out pretty good. I'm happy with all the wiring. Icon looks great. Our SRXL2 is there, antenna's out. So let's throw the canopy on this thing and see how it looks. So there you guys go. Build series on the XL Nimbus 550, all set up and ready to fly. So look for the maiden flight. I wanna thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you haven't already, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. Take care and have a great day.